forward. Hello, and welcome to the first episode of the Jason Cabinets Experience. Our first guest is Elena Valentine. Elena, are you ready to be great today? We're going to be good. Elena is an expert on leveraging video stories in the workplace. With a motto, you cannot be what you cannot see, Elena started filming jobs as a way to get young people excited by the world of work. Since then, her team at Skill Scout has since built a world-class media company. Their films have helped clients like Nike and American Airlines engage candidates and employees alike. She was recently named HR Superhero of the Year by Disrupt HR Chicago. She is also the co-founder of Messia Media Collective, a nonprofit that elevates women filmmakers of color. Elena, thank you for being here today. I really appreciate it. No, thank you. Good to, good to brighten up my day with some face to face video conversation right now. Yes, the new, new normal of this year coming up, huh? Exactly. So, Elena, how did you get started in media? So, I, uh, I got started, you know, I've been in the creative arts for a really long time. Um, I'm a sound engineer by trade. Uh, but how I initially really got this started is I'm a former design researcher who was basically at the time turning really ugly research video, you know, think, you know, behind the, the glass, everyone's kind of been to focus groups. Uh, but basically what I was doing was turning really ugly research video into documentary films that could move C-suite. Um, and so whether that was about um, helping them see the path of what it was like to be a 32 year old mother of two who shops at Target. Um, that's a lot of the work that I was doing. Um, and, you know, it kind of now converged into the work that we're doing at Skill Scout because uh, we were working on a project aimed to connect young people to employment. And these were young people who didn't look good on resumes, many of them lacked access and exposure to jobs. And the motto, you cannot be what you cannot see by Marianne Williamson became ever the more clear. And so when we took a step back, my colleagues and I saw that there was a power in video and there was a power in storytelling in being able to initially just bring jobs to life because job descriptions don't show what a job is like. And so at the essence of, of what we started to do was to start filming jobs, to get young people to ask questions, to make jobs more tangible uh, so that they could make more informed decisions about whether or not they would apply. So that's initially how we got in, was uh, using media uh, for just young people to have a more visceral and compelling experience, um, exposure experience to the world of work. So Elena, was it more the creative process or the technical part of making videos that draw you in? Or was it was a combination of both? For me, it's never been about the technical process. It certainly has always been about the creative. So I've never been, you know, one to kind of geek out on, you know, the latest equipment, the latest softwares. Because again, what you're finding, and this is through social media, this is through all types of forms that, you know, people are using this. Everyone can be a filmmaker. And so what you then really have to concentrate on is what's the kind of emotional experience and connection that I want to make with my audience. And to do that, you really have to think more about the creative process in your story. So Elena, what is a workplace filmmaker? Can you define that? Well, a workplace filmmaker in my eyes is someone who lives, eats, sleeps, and breathes the stories of the workplace leveraging film. So our main mission at Skill Scout is to leverage film to increase human connection in the workplace. And so whether that is a job video, whether that's a video about company culture, whether that's about learning or you know, a leadership giving a powerful message on video, anything and everything that has to do about the ways that we communicate at work and how we might leverage video to increase that kind of connection is what I define as being a workplace filmmaker. So Elena, how do you convince people that their stories worth telling? Cause a lot of people, they do the same thing over and over again. Oh, I'm not doing anything special. You know, I'm not doing anything, you know, spectacular. How do you convince them like, no, your story is worth telling. What you're doing is actually spectacular and great and you need to tell it. Our companies are made up of people and our people are unique. And our companies are always going to evolve because the people in our companies evolve and change and move. Um, and so, 
you know, we've always seen that every story, every company um, has something very unique and worth telling because that's going to be what can differentiate themselves um, from others. So, you know, I, I, th I think, you know, part of it is realizing that everyone has a story of work and why it's meaningful. And it's up to us as workplace filmmakers to capture those kinds of stories with humility, reverence, um, and curiosity. That's actually our main creed, um, that all jobs um, are meaningful um, and that we are here to capture the humanity of that. Elena, so for most people, getting from the camera is not something natural, right? It takes time to learn. It's like a muscle memory. You have to do it over and over again. How do you convince your clients to be to get natural in front of the camera? Is there any tools or tricks or trips, tips or tricks you can tell us about? Yeah. So, I mean, I think a couple of things. Um, you know, we're dealing with two things here. One is people getting comfortable with owning their story, right? And why they're passionate about their work or what makes their work meaningful. And then it's being on camera, which is um, certainly, you know, quite an uncomfortable experience for some. So we have to both kind of split that off into two first. Um, one is around, you know, being comfortable with the story that you have, being self-reflective uh, to have that story before going on camera. Uh, so the first thing I would say is, you know, not everyone's gonna be comfortable with this. I would say one of the biggest fears when I um, am kind of teaching and, and presenting on video is one of the biggest hangups that folks have is getting their colleagues to even participate. So this is a real thing. And what I would say to them is one, identify your cheerleaders first. You know that there are a good five to 10 who off the bat, you know, are very comfortable with public speaking, who are very comfortable with their story. And there's, they are the ones to go first because then you'll have a snowball effect after that because then you'll have people saying, wow, well, if Tim can do it, if Sarah can do it, so can I. Um, and then I think there's also this level of the role that the interviewer has, the producer has in ensuring that that person feels comfortable. Um, that's why I say the kinds of questions that we ask, the kind of environment that me as a producer creates is going to make that person um, comfortable on camera. So one of them certainly is um, sharing out the questions or the, what we call the guiding questions beforehand so that people understand that these are the questions they're going to ask. They're laying out the process. Um, and the one thing that we always say is, look, no scripts. This is supposed to be an informal conversation. You are the expert of your experience. So we need to also frame it in a way that celebrates this person, not makes them feel like they have to say something the right way. Um, that this is about, hey, we're here because we wanna highlight you because you, you know, you've just finished a great project or we wanna attract more candidates like you. Um, and I think that gets them really comfortable to know that you know, they aren't here to perform any differently than just being themselves. And we certainly have a ton of other resources on that I can go on for days specifically around this topic. Um, but that I would say is probably some of the key things that we wanna start on first. That's great advice, Elena. Elena. So you're, you're a great public speaker. How important is it for people to, to practice public speaking? This comes with time. You know, there certainly is a convergence of, you know, public speaking and being on camera. Certainly those that have had more practice, more opportunities uh, to public speak um, are certainly... Uh, will tend to be much more comfortable on camera. Um, but I would say inevitably, like that's the role that the producer has, or if you are, you know, the HR leader who is kind of bringing this together, once again, it has everything to do with how comfortable you are making that person feel just to tell their story. Like take away public speaking for a second, take away the camera, whether that's your smartphone or a you know, more of a full production camera. This has to feel like what they are experiencing is a one-on-one -on -one conversation where you're genuinely interested in why they do what they do. I, I think for me, when I, when I do stuff like this, I think you're always like kind of nervous at the beginning, but you always get a point where you even, you forget a, there's no, any camera around, right? And it's this conversation with you know the person and you forget all about the cameras and all the lights and you, and you just act naturally, but it takes a while to get there, I think. 
Exactly. And that's why you might start off an interview with some real softball, just fun questions, right? So one of the things that we do to, you know, just test the audio, make sure levels are working is like, hey, describe your favorite breakfast, right? Or, you know, tell me the moment, you know, when you had found, you know, your best friend at work, right? Something that's really easy um, that people can just kind of very quickly respond to, get the jitters out so that by the time you do get around to, you know, what the key themes are, they're already loosened up. And so that comes typically probably within five minutes of the conversation. Elena, what are some common mistakes people make when making videos? So there's a few. One of them, especially kind of in, in the videos that we're creating, is people conflating this with how we market and capture our business brand. The big difference here is that, you know, we are not here to create the most interesting man in the world, right? This is about telling it like it is and being probably a bit more authentic and raw, uh, which means that uh, we encourage companies to really lean more into the challenge, lean more into the suck. These roles, um, our work is not all sunshine and rainbows. There's also some challenges to this. And we need to be really upfront about that and the kind of stories that we share. So that's certainly one common mistake is that, you know, candidates are going to smell, you know, kind of a fake, uh, you know, video or statement a mile away. They know that there's, you know, they know that there's some, some downsides to what this role has. And so the more honest we can be about that, the better. Uh, the other thing that we see is um, not giving enough employee voice in the planning process itself. So inevitably, if we are here to create, um, you know, a video about, you know, a warehouse, you know, logistics worker, which right now is, is very much high demand right now. It's, you know, making sure that we can involve these employees earlier in the planning process to, you know, kind of understand what is, you know, the work that you're doing, help them, you know, allow us, allow them to be part of the creative process a bit more, um, which can be really hard, I think, for folks planning a video because they want to plan it very, okay, this is our storyboard, this is exactly what we're going to say. And so we always like to encourage, especially if we're working in the world of HR, that this is as much about a discovery process than anything else. That as you're even going through the process of planning your video, you are gonna find out some new insights about this role, about this person, um, about the mission that people feel that they, they have as a result of the work that they do. Um, and we just need to embrace that. So in short, it's about expecting surprises. Um, and not thinking that everything can be kind of very rigid um, in, in planned out. Um, I would say the other mistake that people make is thinking that it has to be a glossy, fancy video, full production. Uh, there certainly are, you know, advantages and reasons why, you know, some companies might choose for more of kind of full production uh, look. But again, we all have smartphones in our pockets and we're using this every day. And if we are taking pictures of our dogs, cats, and kids, we can also take videos of our workplace. Um, and so that's something to, uh, it's not necessarily a mistake, but certainly a consideration um, that HR leaders should have that this is seen as being more authentic. And so the more that we can democratize the tools and put them in the hands of our employees to tell their own stories, uh, we certainly see that as being really powerful in terms of how we might scale um, and make video more affordable to do. Elena, so follow up on the, on the, everyone has a cell phone. When should you advance from cell phone to like, like, you know, like, like cameras and lighting equipment? When should you make that transition? So it's different for every company. And sometimes it's going to be based on budget. Sometimes it will be based on, you know, the guidelines that marketing uh, might have, which can be very difficult to achieve um, with someone who, you know, isn't a, you know, professional filmmaker uh, or a producer. So one of the things that, you know, we see when one company might choose more kind of full production, you know, cameras, lights versus smartphones, maybe this is kind of the foundational video. So think about videos that, um, 
you know, might be about telling about the mission of your company that just isn't going to change, right? Or the, the history, the company culture. Um, you know, some of those are foundational videos that folks typically like to put more investment into, especially because they're going to be sharing externally and sharing much more broadly. And so for some companies, they feel a lot more comfortable with doing that. Um, we have companies that actually do both at the same time. So companies who are both leveraging full production and doing kind of more smartphone or as we call kind of our production light. Um, and the reason why some folks might go to this is for a couple of things. One is this might be a video that they know just needs to be updatable every couple of months. So think a new company policy or, you know, something that's happening really last minute that we have to address. So think like, you know, a leadership message on, uh, you know, what we're doing to move our employees to all remote work. Obviously, there's a step-by-step -step process that we're going to take, um, you know, but that message could be changing every day as, you know, we're getting new updates. Um, so that might be some of the reasons why folks might leverage um, the smartphone um, or, or stuff that's more in the moment, right? So think celebrations, think things that kind of just happen so much more frequently that we want to capture. It becomes a lot more scalable to do on a smartphone. Yeah, I think a lot of people miss opportunities to like really uh, talk about the employer brand using a smartphone like this in the office, you know, do a quick story and a conversation you're having. I think a lot of people miss those opportunities, you know, like you did a birthday party for an employee, you know, like do it, do an Instagram story, Snapchat story or film, you know, I think a lot of people miss exactly. that. So Elena, I want to get your opinion on, con on content. And what I mean is, this, I think there's some people out there who's like, you know, don't put a lot of content, limit your content, you know, because you put too much, it, it waters down your brand. Other people like Gary Vaynerchuk are like, you know, more content, more content, more content. There's never too much content. What's your opinion on that? It's never going to, this is not a quantity question. This is about a quality question. If what you're doing is putting out thoughtful and quality content that you've thought about the key messaging and who your target audience is, all means if you have access to do videos every day amazing so i think it's 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 framing the question more around quality and is this helping people so i'll i'll put you know skill scout as an example right you know we we do a lot of video right we are a video storytelling company with a video storytelling culture no doubt um but you know we're we're you know, we try to be pretty, you know, strategic when we're creating our videos that every video we're putting out is supposed to be helpful, right? If we're going to, if we're putting out a video around, you know, leaders sharing hard news on video, we've done that ourselves, right? And we give ourselves up as an example to show here's how you can do it too. And so that's a lot of how we move forward with our content is how can we be most authentically helpful to our audience? And so... For me, when I see, you know, be it influencers or others who are leveraged video in that same way, I'm all for it and I really enjoy their content. Elena, on your LinkedIn profile, it talks a little about why you founded Skill Scout. Can you go and talk about a little bit why you started this company? Yeah. And as I, you know, I had mentioned in the past, it was all about working with young people. It's about seeing that there was young people that faced many barriers into, to employment. And one of them was, you know, lacking access and exposure to jobs into the world of work and job descriptions don't show what a job is like. And so for us, we saw that there was a power in video. Media is the literacy of the 21st century, right? We are going to YouTube to get tours of the White House, learn how to braid our hair. Our young people are going to YouTube to also learn about jobs. And so we started, you know, we were inspired to start Skill Scout um, for these very reasons of what might we do to bring more excitement to the world of work that we know that exists in a medium that people can really engage in. They can see the work. Um, they can compare and contrast what previous experiences might have been. Um, and so with video, it's never about, this is kind of replacing the job description or, or the hiring process, but it's certainly helping to expedite it when you're giving candidates an opportunity to self-screen in or self-screen out. And that's a lot of the challenges that we saw with young people who kind of were first kind of coming into jobs is that many of them were just not being successful uh, because they thought that this job was going to be one thing and it turned out to be another, 
right? They just weren't armed with the right information in the right way. Um, and so that's initially why we really wanted uh, to start this and to provide a new way for folks, youth and beyond, to kind of really just get an understanding of, of what jobs are all about um, and, and, and how we can make all workplace communications more human through the power of video. And what I really like about what you're doing is a lot, a lot of companies, like they never update the job description, right? It's the same one for 10, 15 years ago, right? And so this gives a chance for the person in the job right now to, to talk about what's actually going on, you know, and give a more realistic, you know, approach to it. So, exactly. El Elena, can you talk about your own entrepreneur journey? Yeah, and certainly, you know, quite a, quite a time to t talk about uh, the journey now. You know, I never thought that I would be an entrepreneur. That wasn't necessarily the narrative that I had in my head growing up. Um, you know, I started this, my colleague and I started this because we, we saw an injustice in the world. And we saw that we could use the skills that we had, um, you know, not necessarily to be the silver bullet, but to be one of, of several solutions uh, that could work for folks. So um, I think for me, my why has always been very clear and very present in front of me each and every time we do this. And that matters all the more um, when we have, you know, when we experience challenges. Um, you know, I've always believed that this is a marathon, not a sprint. Um, and that I'm here to build a business to last, not to sell. You know, so when we started Skill Scout, you know, this was supposed to be a whole different thing. We were supposed to build a technology platform, build a double-sided marketplace. Um, but then I think as we got down the journey, I think one, we saw that a big kind of glaring need for the world of HR was content that we could really focus on one piece of the solution. Um, and more importantly, you know, I think for myself and, and Abby, we wanted to build a business um, that was gonna stick around. Um, and so that meant that, you know, probably two years into our business, um, we, you know, we stopped raising investment to really drive, um, business through our own revenues. And so of course, then the way that we build our business looks a little different because of that. But that's really important to me. I'm here to build a business to last. Not to isn't, sell. It, isn't it amazing how many entrepreneurs like start building a company and then within six months they give up? I mean, that's why not, that's, that's why not everyone is an entrepreneur. I mean, it takes a really special kind of crazy um, and commitment to your idea, to your mission to follow through. Uh, because this envelops you um, in a way, you know, very much, you know, like raising a child, right? Um, and it can be a very lonely journey. It, it could mean that you're pushing yourself to the brink of your limits, of your stress, of your anxieties. Um, you know, but I think then there's these, these moments when you see the impact that your work is making, or even more importantly, um, when you can see that you are an employer yourself, right? I may be an HR, I may be in the world of HR, but to me, even more, the biggest impact I can make as a leader is not on what Skill Scout could do for other companies, it's what Skill Scout can do for our own workforce. And that's been really important to me um, that we are, we are building. Um, a company of, of incredible colleagues and in that I, I see it as my, my responsibility, um, you know, to kind of continue to drive this forward because we have really great people. Yeah. So this is just my opinion, but I think the last 10 years, of course, it's never easy to be an entrepreneur, but it's, it's been like <clears throat> anyone can be an entrepreneur, right? <clears throat> In the last 10 years, right? You know, there's a capital everywhere, everywhere, you know, some of the bears not there. I think what's going on right now is going to be going to flesh out the non entrepreneurs pretty fast, right? Yes. Yep. Unfortunately it is. I mean, look, I mean, this, yeah, this is, this is not, this isn't an easy road. You have, this isn't an easy road and, and you have to get, be used to failure and to constantly say onward. I'm saying onward so much. I don't think people realize that, you know, there's, there's nothing necessarily very glamorous 
about this work. Um, I think it's romanticized in a way um, that doesn't live up to the hype. This is, it is, we get more failures, we get more no's than we get yeses. And it's just having, I think, the willpower to get up every day and still commit yourself to doing this. And, you know, especially as we think about, you know, these past few weeks and months ahead, uh, the true medal of companies and the true medal of myself as an entrepreneur and the true medal of Skill Scout um, is going to be tested and it's, and it's being tested. And I would say that it's by far from easy right now. Yes. So talk about your, uh, you recently named, I think, HR Superhero by Disrupt HR. What is, what is that all about? Yeah, you know, it's just being involved in the local community of the Disrupt HR chapter here in Chicago. Um, you know, we've been sponsors since their inaugural year, uh, I think probably in 2016. Uh, so it was, you know, a blessing to be, I think, um, you know, highlighted by a community that, you know, I've really committed to and, and they've really um, hugged me. So it definitely was an honor, particularly be, um, to be given that kind of special place, especially among my HR peers. So Elena, you talk about this a little bit, but can you, can you go to more detail what your company actually offers? I know you have like three, three pillars, right? Yeah. So we are, um, main thing is we're here to leverage film to increase human connection in the workplace. And so what does that mean? is that uh, we are a company that's primarily working you know, with HR leaders, with comms leaders to help tell their stories on video is a way to attract, engage, um, or hire talent. So that could be a job video, that could be company culture, that could be you know, content for, for learning and development, you know, any and all communications that happen in the workplace where we could really add film to increase connection, emotion, or information um, is the work that we do. And who's your, like your, your target customers, like mid-sized companies, small companies, tech companies, or, or it doesn't matter. I mean, it's really, it's really spanned, uh, the gamut. You know, when we first started, we built this business on the shoulders of small to mid-sized manufacturers in the Midwest. So we know our CNC and CNC machinists and tool and die makers really well. Um, but have really had the privilege of working with, you know, companies like, you know, Nike, Thermo Fisher, um, Accenture, Honeywell, you know, you know, many companies, large and small in all kinds of different industries. And again, I think it gets to your point. Every company has a unique story to tell because of their people. And so regardless of the industry, regardless of the size, you know, we're seeing that everyone um, sees value um, in video and in however you approach video is really what we do to support companies. Elena, so you do a lot of work with HR. Can you talk a little about why HR is important? Huh. I mean, our people are the backbone of these companies. And if you as a company see people as your most valuable asset, um, HR, it, you know, is in some ways kind of the shepherd of that, um, which is not just about, you know, sharing, you know, regulations and, um, you know, every other, you know, compliance things, which is equally important. It's, it's also just making sure that you know, you have people who spend the majority of their lives at your workplace. And so it's about creating, um, you know, having a kind of a role in fostering a culture where people belong and where people feel celebrated and people are able to really understand and see the meaning of the work that they do every day. That's the role of, an, of a really good HR leader. And that's why I know HR professionals come into this industry. And so back to the entrepreneur journey real fast. I think what a lot of people don't realize or don't forget when they start a company, like suppose you start a company, you build on product, but sooner or longer you're gonna have employees, right? And not only are you responsible for your family and the product, you have like 10 employees, you're responsible for those 10 people and their families, right? And I think a lot of people don't get that. Nope, and I am reminded of that every day. Elena, I understand you have something for our listeners. I do. Um, you know, I do have um, a blog piece that I'd like to share. If you go to skillscout.com slash blog, um, you'll see kind of our latest pieces that specifically, you know, have relevance to right now, particularly around um, one about sharing hard news 
on video and providing some tips that HR can work on either with themselves or with their leaders to share updates that have a more human and emotional tone. Because right now our people not only need information, which is absolutely important, uh, we also need connection and we need assurance. Um, and one of the ways that we can do that when we are not in person is through video. Elena, can you share your social media for both yourself and your company so people can reach out to you? Absolutely. Uh, it's, uh, um, I'm on Twitter. I'm on LinkedIn. Um, just Elena Valentine. You can look me up and I welcome to connect with you. And for our listeners, we'll have her, uh, her link to her gift and her social media on our show notes. You can find the show notes at www.cabinetshrblog.com. So Elena, we're coming to the end of our talk. Can you give us any advice on any subject you want to talk about? Um, on any subject I want to talk about. Yeah. Uh, you know, one, uh, one, one piece of advice that I'm giving myself, uh, is, you know, while we are working remotely, while our lives are being uprooted right now is, you know, finding ways that we can stay creative and grounded. And one of the things that I'm doing every day is someone who, you know, does video, um, is I'm creating short, a short video piece every day. I've committed to every time that we are in quarantine to create one short video piece a day. Um, and this isn't necessarily about work. It's just to provide moments of pause for myself um, and for others if it happens to um, you know, strike them. Um, so you know, I would you know, kind of at this point tap into what's keeping you creative and what's keeping you grounded um, as we try to navigate what's happening right now. Elena, thank you for your time today. I really appreciate it. Thank you. And to our listeners, thank you for your time as well. Remember to be great every day.